presented by DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. The car for you in 58 and style and beauty to captivate. It's delightful, it's beloved, it's DeSoto. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, you may not believe it, but it's me again here tonight with a chance for each of our couples to win up to, uh, how much? $10,000. $10,000. Any of them say the secret word, they win an extra 100 bucks. Yeah. George, who's first? We have two young ladies to meet you now. So will Heidi uh, Eigerman and Heidi Flor Flory come in, please? Fluorescent, isn't it? No, Flory, I think it is. Would you come in, please, now and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome to your bet your wife, uh, life. Say the sacred word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Your name is Heidi Eigerman, and your, and your name is Heidi Florary. Huh? Is that right? That's right, Groucho. Can I call you Groucho? Heidi, Heidi, eh? Yeah, sure, you can call Heidi. me. Call me anything you want. Huh? You can call me later tonight if you want. Huh? <laughs> I'll have to call you each something different since you, you're both named Heidi. Uh, I won't know who I'm talking to. I'll call you Heidi Hi, huh? Oh, and I'll call you I Heidi see. Ho. That's fine. And you can call me Cab Calloway. <laughs> Heidi, do you have a, a middle name? Yes, I have a middle name, Anne. Anne. Heidi Anne. Heidi Anne? Yes. So where are you from, uh, Heidi uh, Anne? I am from uh, Moorland, in the state of St. Gallen, from Switzerland. St. Gallen, that's state, S-T-G, full stop, Gallen, G-A-L-L-E-N. Oh, Gallon? Yes. Is that anywhere near Four Quarts? No. <laughs> Heidi, where are you from? Rausmitten on the Rhine? No, I'm from Lucerne, Switzerland. Are Lucerne you is a very... No, we aren't. No, we aren't. No. Why don't you both get the name of Heidi if you're not sisters? Oh, there are many Heidis in Switzerland. Oh. Quite a famous... What about Heidi no. Gosik? Do you ever do that? <laughs> well, Heidi Ho, what did you do when you were a girl? You wore dresses, I imagine, huh? Oh, they do. Certainly, they do. <laughs> well, in uh, Lucerne, I went to school and graduated there. And you went to school where? School in Lucerne and graduated. I didn't get and, that uh, last one. And graduated. Oh, you graduated, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I went to did Paris. Did you graduate too? Huh? Yes, I graduated too. <laughs> what did you do there? You studied uh, in school? That's right. And then I went to France to learn the French. And then I went to England to learn English. You learned English? And did you uh, graduate in England, too? Uh? <laughs> I did. Uh. And then I went to Italian to learn Italian. Italy to learn Italian. Why were you so anxious to learn so many languages? Well, you see, as more languages, as you know, as a better job you get, and naturally you get paid much well, that, better. that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. And you studied in five different countries, huh? That's right. And what kind of a job did you get in Switzerland after you were... Uh. Educated. I worked uh, as a clerk in a delicatessen store. <laughs> now, in what way did your education help you as a clerk in a delicatessen? I mean, well, after you crat cratawaited. Uh, <laughs> isn't that cute, cratawaited? Do you say that, too? Yes, cratawaited. Huh? Cratawaited. Cratawaited. Well, that's better. <laughs> Cratawaited. He knows how to pronounce it. Cratawaited. Well, I haven't answered my question yet. You haven't then answered the question? question yeah. well, what was the question? Because, I don't uh, remember. <laughs> no, because I was uh, knowing so many languages, I became a manager of a delicatessen store. Oh. I was running a store, you know, I had girls and... And Anne, and what kind of a job did you have? I was, gotcha, I was doing the same. I was a clerk in a stationery store in Switzerland, too. You girls have boyfriends in America? Yes, we have boyfriends over here, but nothing serious, gotcha. Well, do you find much difference between the uh, Schweizer case boys and the American boys? Oh, yes, I think they're quite a good difference. American boys are much faster than the, the European boys. <laughs> Do you prefer that? They call you, no, and I, they call you honey and sweetheart and sugar pie before they know your name. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's uh, now, Heidi Ho, what type of fellow do you find most attractive? In know, other words, what, think, kind of uh, a, what kind of a victim are you trying to snare? I think the best thing to marry, the best type would be a combination of Swiss and American. 
Swiss and American. Right. Do you want it on white bread or pumpernickel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really. Well, you're charming, girls, and it's been Thank real you. jolly talking to you, and you're a wonderful advertisement for Switzerland. Now, let's play your bet your life and see how much money you can win. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. You selected location of famous international landmarks. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're foot. You know what that means? Yes. Yes, you know German, can't you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You speak in Deutsch? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, if you get fear in a whole height, <laughs> you win a thousand dollar. Now, in what country would you find the Great Sphinx? Uh, S P H I N X. Uh, Sphinx. We have a word uh, that rhymes with that that we don't <laughs> <laughs> we don't use here in mixed company, but it means Sphinx. Sphinx in uh, in what country? In Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You have one right now. Now, in what for a city is the historic Alamo? A L A M O. In what city is it? Uh, e L a L A M O. It's in the United States. Alamo. Alamo. The Alamo. Never heard of that. Davy Crockett. Uh, I don't know. Never heard of that. Well, uh, I said it was in the United States. Actually, it isn't. It's in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> now you have uh, one wrong. So and if you get the city? next one, I'm just going to explain. Oh, well, don't frighten them, huh? <laughs> I just want them to understand that if you get the next one wrong, uh, the game is over, so don't. Yeah, yeah well, now you've frightened them. No, I haven't. No, no you frightened me. No, you haven't frightened no. them. Such a charming man can't frighten us. Yes. <laughs> They're full of the old schmear case, these cases. <laughs> <laughs> In what city is the famous Sistine Chapel? Nah, you should know that. Um, we guess, huh, guess, we say Paris. No, mm. Rome. Oh, we should have known that. We should have known Well, you got two wrong in a row, so the game is over for you, however. Ah, it's a shame, but uh, you still have a chance to win some money. Now, get this one right, and you get $100, and this is a very difficult question, and please don't help. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Who is buried? Yeah. Um, Grant's tomb? Davy Crockett is right. Out of it at you. There's something excitingly new and beautiful at your DeSoto dealers now. The brand new spring styling of the 58 DeSoto. The best dress car of the year. With exciting new colors. Spring rose, heather blue, and persimmon red. Now available and at no extra cost. And a new exterior trim treatment that's more handsome than ever. With a bright touch of style to the lower rear deck. And a sparkling anodized aluminum sweep down the side. DeSoto, which already has set the standard in automotive styling, now has an even newer and more youthful look. No other car anywhere can match DeSoto's brilliant new styling. Inside, too, DeSoto's textured fabrics harmonize with the style of the exterior in sturdy, easy-to-care-for beauty. And DeSoto's beauty is more than skin deep. There's the beauty of careful craftsmanship and quality materials throughout. There's the beauty of handling, of response, of ride. Yes, this is the new DeSoto. The best dressed and best built car of the year. See it. Drive it. At your DeSoto dealers tomorrow. Uh, Senora Consuelo Castillo de Bon... Well, I was going pretty well, though, wasn't I? Uh, <laughs> Senora Consuelo Castillo de Bonzo and uh, James A. Carpenter are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. James Carpenter and Senor Consuelo Castillo de Bonzo. Where are you from, Connie? Switzerland? Oh, no. Aguas Calientes, Aguas Calientes, Mexico. How long since have you I, been in L.A.? Since I was nine months young. Nine months young, huh? And I want to tell you that even 
uh, now we are very proud of our East Los Angeles district because there are over 300,000 Mexican Americans there. And really? my mother was responsible for the founding of that part. Your um, mother was responsible for 300,000 Mexicans? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you're Mr. Carpenter, is that right? James A. Carpenter. So what is the A for? Uh, well, I'd rather not say. I might be kidded. <laughs> not on this show. We don't kid anybody. <laughs> That's one thing that we take great care about. We don't kid anybody on this show. What is your middle name? Anastasia? <laughs> is it Ashcan? No, it is. It's Aloysius. <laughs> Aloysius? Yes, sir. Take my advice and change it to Ashcan. <laughs> Where are you from, Ash? Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Though. Hazleton? I was stranded once in Pen Hazleton, Where? Pennsylvania. It's a nice town. Now, why did you leave West Hazleton? Well, I went into the service from there. Oh, oh, you were in the service, huh? yes, sir. What branch of the service uh, grabbed you? Well, I spent most of my time in the paratroopers. You were up in the air? Sometimes. Did, did you see any action? Yes, I did. I had oh. 29 jumps. You saw a lot of action, huh? Yes. Wow. Wouldn't it be awful if you'd landed back in West Hazleton? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you get out of the plane? Do they push you out? No, you jump out. Uh, suppose you don't jump out. Well, you get pushed out then. Oh. <laughs> did you ever get wounded, uh, Jim? Yes, I did. Uh, you did? Well, you look pretty healthy now. Well, I'm pretty healthy on that. You did get wounded, huh? Yes, I was wounded on uh, Nomfer Island and got a Purple Heart with a cluster. They're so casual about it. You never hear the end of it if I got a Purple Heart. <laughs> Some years ago, I was presented with a can of Red Heart. <laughs> That's true. I got that for leading a dog's life for 10 years. <laughs> they called me Old Yeller. <laughs> so what do you do for a living, Jim? I'm a banker. A banker? Yes. I'm assistant manager at the... Uh, City National Bank of Beverly Hills. Oh, you mean Al Hart's branch. bank, huh? Yes. Oh. I hear from Al Hart all the time, you know. He wants to know when I'm going to pay that mortgage. <laughs> I've often wondered, Jim, how does the bank protect itself uh, against embezzlement? Now, there's nothing personal in this, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, uh, there's a double check all the way down the line. I check on the tellers and the bookkeepers. The manager checks on me, and the vice presidents check on him, and the president checks on the vice president. And... Well, in other words, there isn't anybody in that bank that trusts each other. <laughs> <laughs> isn't there any way that a banker in a strong moment could successfully make a way with a wad of dough? Well, none that I can think of. <laughs> Well, it's certainly encouraging to know that you've given this some thought, Jim. <laughs> it's also rather revealing. <laughs> Connie, do you have any money in this bank, or do you keep your money in your stocking, where it'll attract more interest? I should say I do not. How'd you like that one, Connie? <laughs> huh? I keep my money in the old wine cellar. Do you have a job, Connie? Job? Yeah. No, senor. I only own and operate that world-famous Casa La Golondrina restaurant on historic Olvera Street in the old wine cellar. That's the name of the restaurant? Si. Golondrina? La Golondrina. Yeah. And you have not been there? I haven't been there. And if I go there, I'm going down the cellar and look for your dough. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> what do you save in this domain palace? <laughs> I want to tell you about La Golondrina. I we have the would, most huh? delicious Mexican foods, Spanish foods, and California. And we have wonderful... Now, if you go over there, you can each collect $50 for saying the secret word, which is Mexican food. Just food. What are you doing out here? I'm from Minnesota. I was Miss Minnesota in the Miss Universe pageant. You were Miss Minnesota mm -hmm. in the Miss Universe, and now you're a duck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what would you have been if you'd have lost the contest in Minnesota? A duck in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to Minnesota, duck. Huh? <laughs> Come and see us again, huh? I will. And bring Miss Michigan with you next time. <laughs> Thank you very much.
As you I was telling you about that. Put that in your minute, you're in your cellar, in your wine in cellar. In the wine cellar. Well, besides the Mexican foods, I am the mistress of ceremony. Well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, pretend, pretend I just showed up and, uh, and I wanted to have dinner and I had nothing with me except uh, a suitcase of bicarbonate soda. Now, uh, now give us a sample of how you work. I have been waiting for that. Now, if, will you please come here where I can greet you? And yeah, I'll what will I do with a suitcase? Uh, no, aquí Put it under my table. Aquí no más para. Y quiero dar a usted la bienvenida a su casa, este rinconcito de México en Ajay Olvera. Venga usted para darle el abrazo. Well, give me my suitcase. I'm going to look for a kosher restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, senor. Uh, you are going to get the um, abrazo. Don't you know what an abrazo is? Oh, an abrazo. Now you are welcome to the casa. Oh. Now what happens when a customer gets to the door? Gets inside, I mean, assuming that he survives the greeting. Well, <laughs> well the next thing that happens is we break the traditional cascarón en su cabeza. Yeah. Usted What's sabe? That? What's Traditional that? cascaron en su cabeza. You don't know? I'll show you. Maybe uh, usted? Cascara cabeza? No, este. ¿Quiere usted que le rompa la cabeza? What is this? That's a cascaron para romper en la cabeza. Thank you, no. No cabeza? Nobody's going to break a cascaron over my cabeza. <laughs> well, I'd love to initiate you, but would you like me to uh, initiate? Why do you break eggs over the customer's head? Well, because we've had chile rellenos first. You yeah. see, we make the chile rellenos, and then we have the cascarones left over and they're fixed up for a festive occasion. Would you like me to try it on his cabeza? Well, you're not going to try it on mine, huh? <laughs> He's a foreigner, you know. He is. Oh, yes. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yes. Would you object to getting a, an egg cracked on your skull? Well, I'll... I'll I mean, your... Cabeza. Wouldn't you like an egg cracked over your cabeza? Not particularly, but I'll try it once. <laughs> hey, you might like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, wait, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just, just a moment. Are you what sure that the inside of that egg has been removed? If it hasn't, that's uh, certainly going to be a, a good yolk on him over there. <laughs> <laughs> now, now hold your breath, Jim. ¿Quiere usted ser paisano y compadre mío? Si, sí, señorita. You oh, say, right. señorita. Perfect, perfect Hazelton. <laughs> Ahora, usted es Don Pedro. Es me la bra. Oh. <laughs> Folks, do you need money? Are bills bothering you? See your friendly banker, old Egghead Jim. <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and I'd like to continue this, but uh, wouldn't you rather win some money for your cellar? Oh, sí, como no. Uh, well, let's play your bet your life, huh? Eh? Well, let's see. I'm ready. You selected... Uh, 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 no. <laughs> Don't you want a rotten egg cracked on your cabeza? <laughs> no, senor. <laughs> you selected food and cooking. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're through. If you get four in a row right, you've won $1,000. Ooh. Are you ready? What kind of a food is Lita Crunz? It's German. Cheese. Cheese. Queso? Yeah. Cheese. Big cheese, that's right. You have one right now. Add a little, little George, will you? <laughs> if you get the next three right, <clears throat> you'll have a thousand dollars. Can you add a little without anything. clearing? The <laughs> You're out of the game. <laughs> now, in cooking, how many cups in a pint? You ought to know that. Those. Those. Huh? Yeah. Two. That's right. Sir. You I now speak have the those. language too. You know. <laughs> now, uh, what is the uh, vegetable used in making gumbo? That's my fourth brother. Uh, okra. You now have three rights. Limburger cheese is named after a town in what country? Germany. No. That was a very fast answer and also incorrect. It happens to be Belgium. Now you have one wrong. Don't miss the next one or you'll be out of the game. Malt. Malt, M-A-L-T, is generally obtained from what grain? From wheat. No, I'm no, sorry. No. It's barley. That's right. Well, you got two wrong in a row, so uh, the well, game is over for you. That's too bad, but uh, you're still going to get a chance to win another hundred. You have a hundred already. Now, get this right. This is a tough one, and don't help, please. 
What color was the little brown jug? <laughs> brown. Pink, that's right. Yeah. Sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being with us. Just wonderful. You bet you your life. Okay. Thank you very much. We have two young single people ready to talk to you now, Groucho. They're Ruth Herman and Steve Corey. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Ruth, I'll start with you. I bet everybody calls you Babe, huh? Well, okay. Babe, Ruth. Uh, where are you from, uh, Ruth? Uh, originally from Ramat Gun in Israel. Where? Oh, Ramat Israel. Gun. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. How old are you, Ruth? 22. 22. And you're not married? No, I'm not. Are you looking? Uh, sure. Do you know any 22-year-old who isn't looking? I don't know any 92-year-old who isn't looking. <laughs> Do you have any boyfriends? Uh, several, but nothing serious. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, let's see, your name is Steve Corey. Huh? Yes. Are you married? No, I'm not. How old are you, Steve? 27. 27. And where are you from? From Boston. When did you leave Boston? Oh, I more or less left home when I was about 13. Matter of fact, I ran away from home. Why? Sort of had the wanderlust, itchy feet, and I've been sort of traveling ever since. Well, after you ran away from home, and uh, where did you go? And don't leave anything out. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, if I had to tell you everything that happened in my life throughout you, it would take about eight hours. If I told you everything I did in my life, I'd get 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, you say you'd like to get married? Mm -hmm. What kind of a man do you visualize? Well, he'd have to be strong, intelligent, have a sense of humor, uh, like children, be warm and sensitive, good head on his shoulders. You know, sometimes I'm going to ask a girl on this show what kind of a man that she would like to have. And she's going to say that she would like a short, very ugly man without any money who sleeps in Skid Row or someplace. <laughs> now, you, can you... Uh, Fill any of these qualifications, Steve? Oh, uh, yes, Groucho. You can't tell with my uh, clothes on, but I'm in pretty good shape. Well, this, is, this brings us into a different area entirely. Huh? <laughs> Steve, you and I have a lot in common. You don't have muscles until you take off your coat, and I don't have muscles until I put on my coat. <laughs> How about it, uh, Ruth? Uh, will you marry Steve? Well, I don't like to be rushed. Well, you'd better hurry before all that muscle turns to fat. <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and obviously you are made for each other. Well, let's see how you work together. Remember your partner, so before you answer anything, discuss it with each other. Huh? You have chosen the dictionary quiz. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Uh, if veracity is a ravenous hunger, what is veracity? V-O-R-A-C-I-T-Y is a ravenous hunger. What is veracity? V-E-R-A-C-I-T-Y. It's honesty. Well, that's true. It's truthfulness. That's <coughs> certainly a pretty good definition. You now have one right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. All right. Okay. If a crate is... Are you always right? Well, I, I got the figures here. So. Yes. But it's not a very good one. I've been looking at it. <laughs> If a crate is a box, what is a pate? P-A-T-E. The top of the head. It's a head, yes. That's close. Two right now. All right. Now, if a mandolin is a musical instrument, what is a mannequin? It's a dummy. There's nothing personal in this, George. <laughs> <laughs> You now have three right. right. Get the next one right, and you'll have your $1,000. All right. If a centaur is half man, half horse, what is a scimitar? S-C-I-M-I-T-A-R. It's a sword. Take the money. Take the money. Four yeah. All right. You're a big <laughs> Now, you won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10000 So go over there and sit on each other's lap and think about it for a while. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Out of it at you. <laughs> Now, in just a moment, we'll find out if our last couple will try for $10,000. A lot of things in life aren't what they seem to be. Beauty doesn't always mean quality. That's true of women and certainly true of cars. Looks can be deceiving. But here's one car that has as much quality as it has beauty. 
The magnificent new 58 DeSoto. It has what we call the look and feel of the future. The name DeSoto has stood for quality for a long time. Quality all the way. Not only in the big things like the newly designed engine and torsion air ride, push button driving, and new styling. But DeSoto quality shows up in details too. Such things as DeSoto door handles, and beautiful new upholsteries are made with the same high standards in materials and craftsmanship. DeSoto looks big on the outside and is big on the inside. Just look how roomy this is. Plenty of headroom and uh, plenty of legroom. So whatever DeSoto you choose, you can be certain of the finest in quality, roominess, and driving comfort. Drive it yourself. And you'll see what we mean when we say the 58 DeSoto has the look and feel of the future. All right, Ruth Herman and uh, Stephen Corey, would you come back in here, please? Well, you won $1,000. Now, if you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500. What are you going to do? I'm going to go on. And you? Same. Okay. Now, pick a number between you, and then one of you spin the wheel. You're going for the big number. Get together and pick a number from 1 to 10, spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth 2,000. If your number comes up, the question is worth 10. Understand? Enough. What number? 10. 10? Tiny. Well, your number was 10 and it came on 4, so this question is worth $2,000. One of the big news stories of 56 was the sinking of the Italian liner Andrea Doria. For $2,000, tell me the name of the ship that struck the Andrea Doria. What's the answer you've decided on? Stockholm. Stockholm is right. Congratulations and thanks for being with Thank us. You. you bet your life. It's a shame to shampoo without tame, tame cream rim. After your shampoo, if your hair is dry, hard to comb, or fly away, you need tame cream rinse. Never greasy. Mixes with water. Rinse on tame after your shampoo. Tame is taken into your hair, conditions it, leaves it easy to comb, soft and shiny, willing to stay in place. It's a shame to shampoo without tame. Tame cream rinse. Tonight, You Bet Your Life has been brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Friends, go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. This is George Fenneman inviting you to join us next week for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And to listen to Groucho each week on NBC Radio. Chrysler Corporation also sponsors television programs on other networks. Consult your local TV listings for time and stations. And here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. The heaviest driving of the year is coming up. So take advantage of Safety Check Month. And have your car checked for safety now. Next week, You Bet Your Life will be brought to you by Papermate Pens.